Um, go ahead, Christy, please. Okay, so I started out by providing a spreadsheet that I had found on um, in our network that Mike had used, I believe, and provided to you guys at some point back in his tenure um, with the town. So I kind of updated that as a starting point um, to get us going. And so I basically listed out the different funds, who has, well, like I said, Mike had done this, who has custodian of them. Uh, I gave the balances as of 12 31 16. Those are all from the audit. And then I gave balances uh, as of 10 31 17 and provided some additional notes <coughs> on each of the funds. Beyond that, I believe that I have been asked specifically to speak on the private detail, the cable, and the ambulance funds. So after your first sheet there showing you all the funds, I have another attachment there basically giving you the history of the Hampton Cable TV Local Origination Fund, the Hampton Emergency Medical Services Fund, and the Hampton Detail Fund. I showed you when they were established as special revenue funds, the Warren Articles that they were established under, and then um, when they evolved or became revolving funds. So they went from special revenue to revolving funds. Uh, all the years are there with the article numbers, and then attached to that are the two RSAs, one that has to do with the special revenue and one dealing with the revolving fund. After that, I gave you a little more history on those three funds, letting you know their balances going all the way back to 2000, because that's when they were all established as revolving, or as special revenue funds, I'm sorry, not revolving, as special revenue funds. And then I gave you um, my memo as a whole on each of those funds. And then I went a little bit further and gave you a separated onto each fund with the backup of the Warren articles, plus the cable origination fund has some details that are in the code book for the town. So I provided that with each of the funds. So we can go through however you guys choose. I just was trying to give you the overview and then maybe you guys can give me some guidance on where you would like me to go. If you want me to read about all of them, I can or well, whatever you'd like. Let me, um, let, me <clears throat> let me see what Tim Jones has to say. Okay. Well, I just have some very general questions. I don't think we need to have it all read to us. Okay, Tim. Um, if you have you want to answer, uh, ask some questions, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, are these fund balances are they accurate? Because I hope so. Cable key. <laughs> You've got a label. Why, <laughs> 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 You tell your kids all the time, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I hope they would be too. So, so we're we're sharing that. The fund name cable committee, which should be cable TV fund. Yeah, that's not correct. There's yeah. a typo there. You can blame Mike Schwartz for that, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> the but cable that, fund balance. But that fund balance as of Halloween it, is only. It's not, that's not right. That's no. not right. No. Well. That's why I asked the question. Yep. That is incorrect. So can we, can we re, uh, not right this minute, but can we. Uh, I have the. I'll take that. You. Oh, you yeah. do? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so instead of it being what I'm reading, 39,000. Yeah, it's not 39,000. That's my. Okay. That's my not going back and doing corrections. Uh, it is $392,271.69. Wow. Quite a difference. $392,271.69. Thank you. Tim? Now, can we speak about these other ones, like police detail? Is that an accurate number on police detail? Yeah. We currently have on I will um, look at the end of October. I have all the October financials here. So for these um, four funds down there that I report on, we can look at them real quick here. Let's see. The, rec the recreation has $153,783.37. Mm -hmm. The cable one we just corrected. The private detail has $146,351.85, so it just rounded, rounded up there. Up, it, yeah. And then the ambulance fund has $619,502.36. And the last one on so that sheet... rounded it down. 
Well, because it's 30 minutes, so it's under five. I understand. Just teasing. Mm. And then um, the wastewater system development charge, I don't know if that one got added. Yes, that's up on the top here. It has $191,755.98, so I'll round up. Okay, I would, I would suggest that, you know, all of these numbers are accurate with the exception of the correction we made on yes. the properly named cable TV fund. Yes, it's missing the two. It was missing the two. Missing the two? Yep, it was 392,000, correct? Yeah, we only had 39,000 there. So. Yes, I... Oh, I see. You slipped the digit. Right. Okay, got it. Didn't notice that. I would suggest, Mr. Chairman, it's okay with you that we just uh, take... Uh, the uh, cable TV fund for us and the EMS and I'll go right detail ahead. fund go together ahead, Tim. Let's and do then the, get out of here. Let's do the cable TV fund for us, please. We've got too much money in this fund. Everyone knows that. Everyone agrees with that, right? No. No. Oh. They don't. Let me read to the committee okay. from what I have done for my research, okay? okay. It says, the cable television itself has a long history, which can be found in Chapter 69 of the Town of Hampton Code of Ordinances, dating back to 1980. In March of 2000 is when the Special Revenue Fund was created. In March of 2013, the Special Revenue Fund then became a revolving fund, and 25% of franchise fees were to be placed in the fund. Lastly, in 2016, the percentage of franchise fees to be placed in the fund was increased to 100%. The majority of the money that goes into this fund is used to pay salaries of part-time employees, who record events such as meetings, sporting events, etc. Equipment needed to run the station and a portion is requested by SAU 90 to cover costs for media, coordinator, and equipment costs. I have spoken with Brian McCain, the chairman of the cable committee, and have been informed that there is a plan in place to expend the funds in this account. The first goal is to hire a part-time control room technician, followed by studio upgrades and live streaming. The studio upgrade and live streaming is expected to is expected to be around 167000 The committee is also expecting to see a request from SAU 90 for a cost related to the new studio that will be part of the Academy building project. This is expected to be in the $80,000 range. So there, with the 167 and the 80, you're almost out to the fund balance. Not even close yet. That's 240, and the fund balance is essentially 400000 Right, but there's a part-time employee that they're looking to hire at 20 hours a week at $20 an hour, I believe, with benefits, not benefits, but uh, mm. Social Security and Medicare and all of that. But a lot of what you just spoke to are like one-time expenses, right? Yes. And yet, to get a studio, I would assume that's a one-time expense. Exactly. We're not going to build a studio every year, are we? No. no. Of course not. I'm not on the cable committee. Well, I would assume that that would be absurd to build a studio every year. Yes, okay. that would be absurd. Uh, but yet we're pulling in, how much money did we pull in this year? Like, just $300,000? Well, last year, the balance in the fund uh, was $181,337 at the end of 16. So, so we pulled in 210 as of Halloween. Yeah. yeah. As of Halloween, we pulled in two hundred. Right, well, we get quarterly checks from them, so that that October number may have the last quarter in it. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look. I don't know if it's ahead or in the rears that they no, pay I'm that. No, I'm pretty sure that that has the last quarter in it. I think so too. Yeah, but I'd have to look and see. We get four payments a year from Comcast. So we've got three this year. Well, no, we may have four in there. I'm thinking. I'd have to go look and see, because we're in the third, we're in the fourth quarter when you do October financials. Tim, you know, Tim, hold on just a minute. I just want to clarify something here, okay? Christy, you said that as of uh, 2016, you used the number 181,337? Yes. I believe. And I just want to ask a quick question. I don't mean to interrupt you, Tim, but uh, so that was the total brought in in 2016. No, that was the fund balance. In oh, the fund balance. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Your that's last fine. check from Comcast okay. yeah. was like $70,000, right? I don't recall off the top of my head. I look at a lot of I remember, yeah. No, it was more than that. Huh? It was more than that. It was more than that. So you multiply that times four. Closer to 100,000. Right. So I multiply that times four. You do it quarterly. That's 400,000 a year, or four times 75 is still... Uh, it, it depends on the number of prescribers and, right. and what, what they're pres uh, prescribing to you. Yeah, right. But three to 400,000 a year is pretty 
Sounds pretty accurate. In 2016, yeah. we took in $286,715.51 mm -hmm. for franchise fees, and that was when it was still at, in 16, right. it was, hadn't been increased or it had. Oh, no, it got, year, it, yeah. 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 And so, in 2017, to date of these financials, we had taken in a total of $272,040.08. So we're, we'll just backtrack a bit here. For, for a time, we were only dedicating a portion of the revenue stream from the so-called franchise fee to the cable TV fund. Yes. And as of last year, we changed that to 100%. Yes. Which I 100% supported because we're charging people this fee for our local key cable TV, and all of it is, in my mind, should be going there. Otherwise, it's a sales tax rather than a user fee. But the truth is, is that that's too much money. It's more than is necessary to run the cable TV operation. But it's also true that because we were playing a um, kind of tight with the cable TV expenditures over the years. They're a little bit behind the time technologically wise. And so they do need an upgrade. So there does need a period, period of time, like this year, we'll be able to build up the fund so we can refresh everything technologically and get to a good baseline and then establish that what our actual annual costs are plus depreciation for the equipment so that we can then estimate how much money we actually need cable TV or Comcast to charge their customers the proper fee rather than what I would call an exorbitant fee, which is what they're paying now and have been paying for years. Because right? it's far more than what was necessary to run the <coughs> operation. Now I understand this is generally considered to be a true statement, even at the Board of Selectmen, that they need to address with Comcast the um, franchise fee uh, charge. And how we go about establishing what that right number is is still kind of up in the air, but it seems on a general level you need to get to a baseline and establish your annual cost going forward, including appreciation, and then get an estimate because it's basically a percentage, like a sales tax, on what their cable, their basic cable only, Fred? Is it just basic cable? Yes, it's just basic cable. Right. Well, right now, no, it's cable. Cable, cable period. Cable period, but okay. it's not their online services or things of that right, nature. Right. So it's any any TV element of a cable right. TV just, package, just the TV, TV packages. Yeah. And, and what is it? Three or four percent now? I think it's four. Four percent. So we're charging a four percent uh, <coughs> tax or user fee is what it's supposed to be, right. um, and it's it's more than is necessary. So we're we're causing people who are Comcast TV subscribers, which I am not, so it's not going to affect my pocket at all. I cut the cape, I cut the cord some time ago. And so did you, Mr. Chairman. Right? Continue. <laughs> <laughs> but still, we, we shouldn't be we shouldn't be you know charging people uh, uh, in excess. And, and so, I'm hoping that by having this conversation, that it brings the bear that the board of selectmen, um, when they endorse going to 100 percent, recognize it was too much money and that needed to be addressed. And it does need to be addressed. I haven't seen a whole lot of conversation going on or action going on in that area. And I would like to encourage that uh, to uh, kind of uh, get a boost start again. And for that, I'll just shut up. And let, unless you want to comment on what I just said, Fred. No? Okay. okay. I, I just, to, just to summarize a little bit of what Tim said, because I think you have a pretty good idea of the big picture that, that Tim is drawing. And I think we all in this room know what he's talking about. Um, but it, it, at this point, there's a lot of equipment that needs to be changed out in that room, new digital equipment, a lot of stuff switches. Um, and once we get to that point, and once, as Tim pointed out, we get a better idea of what is going to work. How much does the, you know, but the cable committee need every year, come up with a budget, then we can focus on that number and zero in a little bit more. Right now, we don't really know that. That's just a bit of a summary of what Tim just said. Right, Christy. and the, that's exactly what Mr. McCain has, Brian McCain and I have had discussions on this. I mean, I only put so much into the details because I didn't know how far we wanted to get into the topic here, but that's exactly what they're hoping to do, that yes, the fund does have a large balance right now, 
maybe it exceeds the amounts that I was just throwing out that needed to be used. But that's their goal, is to update the studio, have the money available if the school does need it, because we do um, provide money to the schools, as we should, um, for their local TV channel. And then after that, they plan to do exactly what you had mentioned, you know, get a budget, figure out what they need, and then at least then everyone in the community will know what is needed, and then it'll be up to the voters or whoever, the Board of Selectmen, whoever it is, to decide how we go about Well, it's really up to the selectmen to... Uh, to negotiate a contract fee with Comcast, and then Comcast should be happy to say, hey, we're going to reduce the, the, the total mm -hmm. cost to our customer by reducing this fee. I don't think there's going to be a fight with them over that. might be some bureaucratic hassle, but beyond that, I'm sure they'd be happy to do it. But it's the Board of Selectmen that need to reach out and do that. And they will. Too. Otherwise, what's going to happen is we're going to revert back to what we did years ago. We're going to say, oh, there's too much money in the fund. Let's take money out of the fund and use it to reduce the tax rate which effectively turns it back into a sales tax. And that's, Tim, that I think everybody has understands that point. Well, I know. I just needed to emphasize it because I, I have to. You have emphasized it, and I understand it. I think everybody is going to be happy with the result. It's not going to happen tonight or even Agreed. this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, but we're all on the same page with that. Thank okay. you very much. Uh, Sonny, you had something yeah, you wanted to mention? Uh, Channel 13, up and running in the school's budget, have you compared what their operating costs are? One thing I've always done is look at the town of Exeter for, to see what they spend for services. You know what I mean? Well, this fund is operated by the cable committee, not by the finance director, so you would have to ask that question set, of them. They've set up a studio and they're operating. Who set up a studio? Hmm? Who set up the studio? You don't have a studio? We well, do not have a studio. No. No. Not yet. Not, not yet. yet. It's going to be at the uh, new academy. Okay, does that answer your question, Sonny? No, more or less. Thank you very much. Any other questions about this no. cable? All right, continuing on. Yeah, EMS fund. If I'm EMS, right. absolutely. Let's go right uh, to it. EMS fund is a very exciting fund. And that it's would be fun. fund 27, I believe? Yes. Sounds good to me, but okay. I like the name rather than numbers. All right. See, that's fun. Um, and, and exactly like the <coughs> private detail fund. Which is not exactly like it. It's no, very there different. There are some exact things about it. Uh, uh, perhaps. Mike Schwartz's spreadsheet calls it his detail. It's actually a private detail fund or something like that, right? So that needs a correction as well. But uh, that minor point. They were both... Uh, funds that were created in 2002 and then destroyed in 2006 in favor of revolving funds, right? 2006 they became revolving funds, yeah. Right, right. Now, I didn't look in detail on EMS, but I did look in deep, more detail on the police detail. Notice I'm speaking these together now, okay? Um, and again, Mike Schwartz's spreadsheet, I suspect, is wrong because it says expenditures are approved by chief or deputy chief. But the one article actually says the town manager alone decides. So it's not the deputy. He may seek approval from them, which would be logical for them to do, but it's entirely the town manager's call. I assume that's also true with the EMS fund. Is that right, Fred? The EMS fund set up slightly differently. So you don't make the call on the expenditure? Well, there? I have to approve the call. Okay, but ba basically that pays the expenses of running the ambulance. Right, right. That's bottom line. We don't take anything else out of that except new ambulances. See, before, in 2000, when the funds were created, uh, expenditures had to be taken out for your time you vote for your several warrant right? Correct. Right. Yeah. And so they were converted in 2006 after 2004 and 2005 warrant articles to take money out failed. And the town manager at the time, not you, Fred, but the other guy, Mr. Barrington, Barrington uh, created, destroyed the funds and created the revolving funds and gave the town manager exclusive authority for withdrawing from it without going to any... And actually, the town meeting did that. Well, Farrington broke it. Let's get real. Fund 27 does read in that article that I attached. It does say town manager approval. Yeah. Right. That's for EMS, too, right? right. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, the, and it actually, was if you look at the deliberate session minutes from 2006, it's actually explained by the moderator at the time, I believe his name was Walker, 
who said that the private detail fund is going to function exactly like the EMS fund. Except EMS was for EMS and private de police private detail police private detail related. So I got that correct, right? Basically. We're all on the same page factually, right? Okay. Now, the actual use of the EMS fund is it pays for everything related to the ambulance, right? Everything. Okay. So people who operate the ambulance, they are employees and they get paid, but they get paid out of this fund, right? Is that true? The EMS officer gets paid directly <coughs> out of this fund. Right. Any overtime callbacks get paid out of this fund. Right. And then all of their incentives, if they have the incentive to be the paramedic or whatever their percentage incentives, we do a journal entry. That's paid those out are of paid, the fund. Yeah. yeah. Those right. are right. Um, paid out of the fund. It's like eighty or 90000 a year. Yeah. So everything related to the EMS is paid out of this fund. Especially in the employees, in particular, what's on my mind at the moment. The fund you're going to buy an ambulance for what three hundred and two hundred forty thousand something like that. That's coming out of this fund as well, I assume. Yeah, and we we approved it yesterday. Right, right. And so I like the EMS fund the way in terms of the way it's operating because it's all very clean cut. We have a very discrete function, which gets paid out of a single fund. There's no overlap the budget with it at all. So, I mean, these people, like the EMS operator, for example, he gets benefits. Is, is, does, he, does, does that get, does his benefits? His retirement and stuff does, yes. That gets taken out of the fund also. Right. Under the payroll benefits, yes. Okay. My concern is, is that on the police private detail fund, this is not the way it has been operated. Uh, I, I, I've looked and, and, and asked around, and I haven't been able to find, and it, just as an example, any, any way of, any history of, the pension contribution for the police detail because they earn police uh, pension rights when they're on detail, right? Right, and there's a journal entry every month that right. moves it to the fund. So it actually takes it out of the fund and puts it into um, personnel administration? How does no, that work? No, no, no. There's the a case? journal entry every month that takes it from the personnel administration and moves it to the fund. Right, but essentially it's being paid for through the budget. That pension. When it actually comes out of the payroll system, yes, but when every month I do a journal entry and I move the retire, you're talking about retirement, um, you know, those yeah, we, items. We correct. charge for the police private details based on a formula, right, which is being changed, I believe, right now. Right? But the formula consists of such things as uh, the cost of the officer's uh, wages, including benefits, some percentages of automobile de depreciation, right? Equipment depreciation in general, right? Did I get all that right, Fred? We don't charge for depreciation. Yeah, yeah, we don't charge for depreciation. You charge for mileage. It's called a sinking fund, and that's illegal in New Hampshire. Okay. So you don't but charge, we charge for, the, for the cruiser. Is that what you're speaking of? Yeah. We charge for use of the cruiser, use but not the depreciation. Cruiser, not depreciation. Okay. That's yeah, 20%. The use of the vehicle. Right. Like $14 uh, an hour or something. Right. right. Yeah. And so we see manifest uh, in this year's budget the. Uh, the contribution from the fund into the acquisition of one of three police vehicles. Wow. Two. Two. Oh, in the 18 budget, maybe it is one, but for 17 it was two. Okay. But in 18, I don't, I don't so, know. So I see, I see the transfer from the fund into the budget to pay for the, the uh, police cruiser. Mm -hmm. But what I'm looking for is the transaction that takes it from the fund to pay for the policeman's pension. And the policeman's FICA. So well, you don't see that for um, the EMS one I directly thought, either. I thought, I thought, I thought well, you, you see that. payroll benefits on there, but you're, I don't. I guess I don't know exactly what you're asking for. It's the same exact journal entry each month for both funds, okay. along with I move library and cemetery into their own sections on the budget too. Uh -huh. So it's a monthly journal entry that is done for retirement, and it's, it's, it's called payroll benefits, I think, on the monthly financials. I think if you look at fund 26, hold on. I do a journal entry, and I think it's literally just called payroll. I don't, want, I, don't want to, I don't want to bore the world with the accounting uh, behind it, but I am curious. New Hampshire Retirement, Social Security, and Medicare are all listed out on fund 26. And then on fund 27, for some reason, I didn't set these up, but for some reason on fund 27, it's all lumped together, I believe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not being treated the same, and it's just causing confusion, I guess. Oh, no, it is. It's listed out separately. Medicare and retirement. There's no um, 
Social Security because in everyone fires full time. That would be getting transferred to that fund. So it is the same in, in the financials. Is that information that's in my packet that you gave out today? No, it's in your monthly financials that you get every month. Okay. The, I didn't. That, that I didn't. Include, I don't believe that, that I did. The detail you just cited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's listed. It's part of the detail. Under expenses. Right. Apparently, I missed it. I'll have to look more closely. Uh, thank you. I have a journal entry that's set up, but I plug in the wages. Would you mind if I spoke with you offline and got a better understanding? Would that be okay with you, Fred? That's fine with me. Okay. Okay with you, Mr. Chairman? Fine. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll look, look, look for you, Christy, for in a subsequent time to get more, more better understanding in my rather slow brain. Okay. And just, to, just to clarify, okay, the Fund 27, and it make sure that I'm correct in saying this, when somebody goes for an ambulance ride, that's where the money's coming from. That's a, that's the revenue. The, the, the billing. Fund, okay? yeah, right. The billing. It doesn't. It's not a hundred percent. You bill it. You get money from insurance companies. You right. there's a certain amount that right. doesn't never comes in. But and the same thing with the fund twenty six. This is for the people at home as well to realize that this it, the money's not commingled with the, <coughs> the money from uh, general fund from taxes and stuff. This is in a separate account. And it's it's taking care of it's funding itself because the ambulance is almost like a company. You know, we bill out for the services. And the same thing with these um, police details. Same thing, uh, utility companies, etc., are paying into this. And Tim was, um, I think, wanted to make sure that, for instance, when a police officer is working a detail, working at a rate of overtime or whatever. The rate is that for that particular officer, if there's a cruiser involved, the FICA, the the uh, pension, everything else, that's all being taken out of this fund. And and Christy has said she, she makes a journal entry every month. It is done by a journal. Bring the money over, the right? Yeah. So I think that that's important for people to understand that. Thank you very much, Tim, for bringing it <coughs> up. Anybody else have anything about Fund Twenty? Six or fund, fund 27. I'm glad that we talked about this because it does clarify a lot of things and so that everybody understands what's going on. There's nothing that everything is transparent in this town. You just, you know, you ask the questions, you get the answers, and I think that's very important. And I want to thank you both very much. Um, any Anything else for them, for Christy or Fred tonight, for hey, anybody here? One. On the um, police details. What is the current cruiser uh, rate that's being charged? I thought it was 14, but let me, hold on, let me check and see if I have something on here. I think I might have some extra backup here. Let's see. I believe it was 20 at one point. Is it 20? I thought it was 14.35, I, I remember, from my payroll day, so that's why I'm saying no, that. it's but higher than that. It's higher what is, than that? I, I don't so. think so. And what's the administrative number? Because it was always like 20%, but no, what is that No, it was 30, now? and it just got moved to 50. So it's 50% right. is the administrative fee right. yes. that's charged, and then the cruiser fee... Not the cruiser, through. let's see if any, there's a cruiser on this bill here. Let me check. Yeah. The cruiser's 14.35 an hour. 14.35 an hour. Per so hour. see what happens when the officer turns around and he goes out to a detail. They tack on 50% administrative fee to cover right. expenses plus 14.35 an hour for the use of a cruiser when they take a cruiser. So yeah. that all goes into this fund, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. When it's billed, it goes into yeah, the fund. Yeah, it's a mass there as opposed to the general fund. Yeah. Thank you very much.